T. Welcome back, Nick Linus Comic Corner Classics, as you know in Classics. This is episode number 1440, uh, actually it's 55, 1455, and that was channel number 1349. Next one will be, next to the Comic Corner will be the 1350 double shot. Now I got two, two Marvel trades. One is a finale for writers run a particular series. The other one does a mini series for this particular writer. Alright, first up it is Thanos, Volume 1, The God Quarry. Yep, this is the second and last trade to collect issues from Jeff Lemire's run for the book. Now you're probably thinking, wait, did this book last for 18 issues? How did this run, like, who took over the last six issues? Donnie Cotis did the last six issues of the series. Yep, I would discuss that when, when, when I get a chance to get hands on the trade that collects it. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck is the God Quarry? Well, it's explained by Thanos. Now, of course, things starts off with Thanos on Titan. Yes, on his homeworld Titan. And it's in ruin. And, of course, he gets beaten up by some people. He says, you visit, you, you visit our territory. Your territory. This is my planet. And then, of course, he's rescued by, the former, by his son's former crew, which is comprised of Star Fox, Champion. Yeah, the champion of the universe. And Nebula, where basically they figure the idea to, well, that Thanos will restore his power in order to take out his son Thane. So, he goes to a place known as the God Quandry, which is apparently behind a black hole of all things. Yes, a freaking black hole. And let me show you what this thing looks like. Like, wow. When you see this, you're like, huh, this looks familiar. Yeah, the way this place looks, it looks like something of uh, something Jack Kirby would come up with. Even though Jack Kirby himself didn't come up with this damn thing. And look, here's the black hole that they have to go through. Now it's only Thanos and his brother Star Fox go through here. And they go through there, and here you are, the God Quarry. Now, from what I've read, this quarry is based upon. And you can be very surprised about this. It's based upon the source wall from DC Comics. Yeah. This graveyard of bones. It's based upon the source wall. Yep, so Thanos basically goes to the cup, this witch's coven, who are the protectors, basically the receivers of this place. And then, of course, where Star Fox uses charm on the ladies. It doesn't work, it's shocked. And, of course, we cut back to seeing Thane, who was the host of Phoenix Force. And, of course, he's there with, with Death. Which, by the way, Death looks like this now in the series. Where she's wearing very skimpy attire. By the way, Death also wore this off when she popped up in... I kid you not. I was kind of surprised when she showed up in this title. And I'm like, really? She's interested in this guy? Now, previously, before she hooked up with Thane, she was only interested in Deadpool of all people. Yeah, she's interested in Deadpool. Deadpool has nothing to do with her at all. Not much. So... Who was the other person? Ben Riley. Yes, because of Ben Riley dying and come back multiple times. Oh yeah, and they go to, and of course, by the way, they're on Titan, and one of the aliens are hap just happened to have uh, Thanos' helmet, which of course, it's like that helmet, and of course, they got hands up with no problem, and then he apparently kills him off screen. And apparently, Champion Nebula are so bored that. They decided to do the unthinkable. All pain of these two decided to have sex. Yep, they did that. Yeah, I'm like, man, champion, you lucky guy. And this is the same woman who, who previously kicked him in the balls. And yet, she slept with him like, man. And it's like, well, uh, well, don't get used to it. It's a one-time thing. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm open for another round. <laughs> Yeah, he enjoyed that. And then he puts his pants back on, of course, because Thane has shown up. Yes, Thane. Now you have the tw they have where Thanos goes to the God Quarry to regain his power. And then, of course, you have the cover here, where he ends up in Ultimate World, where apparently he's a leader of the Avengers. And in front of his boss, which is kind of weird. And by the way, it's the... It's the lineup that Mark Wade had in the, well, 
just simply titled Avengers Book Before Secret Empire, which is basically Spider-Man, the Nindy Van Dyne Wasp, the Vision, Sam Wilson Falcon, Thor, uh, Jane Foster Thor, and Hercules. Yeah, Hercules was not part of the previous line, all different Avengers. He's part of the just, just simply Avengers. And they five nominations. Apparently, Daredevil is part of this lamp, along with Ironheart, which is interesting. After the Fiend, of course, then he does his little signature pose where he basically puts his hands behind his back. Yeah, he actually does that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, at one point you have Nebula and Champion when they crash the spaceship on the surface. And, of course, he does his little pose. Yeah, Thanos loves doing this pose where he puts his hands behind his back, like, hmm. Yeah, he does this basically because he's a good, because a good, because he's a pretty good strategist. Yep. And apparently, figures out this all illusion and kills among all the heroes. He gets freed and apparently regains his power. And he's like, "Now nah, I'm ready to face my son." And of course, his son's basically threatening to kill a Champion. He's like, "Where is he? Kill him, thing. Give it, give him to me." Where? Is, and of course, Nebula seeing Lady Death like. Where, where are you? Where did you come from? I am everywhere, Nebula. I am everyone, even you. And you were saying, saying, What is my father doing? Where did he go? I'm right here, boy. And he says, Father, will you face me? Face you? I will wipe you from this world like the axe that you are, Thane. I am Thanos. I have returned. So awesome. And throughout the next couple issues, we have the brawl between father and son, Thane versus Thanos. It is so awesome. And they fight, 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 fight. And they fight for quite a while. They fight across several planets. They have destroying some planets too. And they do this for the next couple issues. Until the end of issue 11, they end up on the God Country with, of course, Star Fox, Air Conscious, with Nebula and Champion. And then, of course, then the witches basically remove the Phoenix Force from Thane. Oh, and by the way, in case you're curious, though, when is next time the Phoenix Force is seen? Believe it or not, it was actually very recently. It was actually not seen until Jason Aaron brought back in the pages of Avengers where he came back to Earth and was such a new host. And right after he's free from the Phoenix Force, basically Thanos just beats the crap out of him because he basically he has no power. And he picks him up. By the throat, and then he just takes back his helmet, puts it back in his head, like, think he's gonna kill me? You spare me? Nah, I'm gonna drop you in the in the god country. And he turns to stone, similar to how Relic, when he touched the source wall, he turned to stone too. And then Thanos is like, when he sees, they did is like, she's ready to embrace him. And she's like, nah, I don't need you anymore. No, I, I no longer need or you want your love. Yeah, and then of course the witches are like, they basically evaporate this version of death, and think he's like, is she dead? You should have heard of that. You can never kill death, only the layer. Yep. Yep, Edros. And then of course they leave. He he leaves. And where do you go? Have no fear. I'm the champion of the verse. I will find a place out. And Grace is like, oh, really? And then he goes back to one of his bases, where apparently he had killed some people. And then, Siri, and then, then you have Jeff Mears and with him sitting back on his throne, thus ending this run. This book is fantastic. This book, roughly a 10 out of 10. It's really good. Final thoughts on Jeff Mears' run for Thanos. This book is fantastic under Jeff Lemire. It's surprising, though, he left at the 12 issues. You would think, though, that 12, based, basic, based on the ending, that would be the end of the series. But no. It continues for six more issues. even has an annual. Yep. But, gotta love Thanos. It is really good. I saw from TV that, basically, they brought back the Phoenix Force. I was like, really? They brought back the Phoenix Force? Yet, yeah, the time when this came back, it only had been four years since it had been last seen in comics. Then after this, I don't think it popped up again for another four years. It's popped up just recently in the most recent story arc for Avengers. This is, of course, before the events of Heroes, Re Heroes Reborn. Yep. All right, moving on to a mini series 
by Matthew Rosenberg. Multiple man. It makes all sense in the end. Yeah, the collects the five issue miniseries by him. Of course, the artwork, I'll just put on the artwork in here. Uh, the song in the cover is done by Mike Diodato. He does not do the interior artwork. Nope, Mike Diodato does not do interior artwork. He does his issues. Uh, does pretty much all, all the remaining covers. You have German Perelia does the interior artwork. For this one, it is... For these five issues, it is Andy McDonald. The artwork is the artwork cover is done by Marcos Martin. Now, this one you have it's where you have it's where the X somehow find Jamie Mandrix alive, despite the fact this guy is supposed to be dead. Yeah, according to Beast, that apparently because he was investigating the the Empire stuff, he died, and then they find him alive. Apparently, this is actually his only surviving dupe. Now, I had this theory rolling around that because of all the whole dupe situation, that there would be still multiple, that there'd be another Jamie Hendrix out there. And, well, there proved that would be one. This was, of course, a bartender. Yep. And they find him alive, and this book has a lot of time traveling, even to a future. Apparently, Mandrix is the, is the, is the dictator of the planet, which I thought that was kind of weird. And... Well, they don't really explain exactly what's going on with this multiple man. This is not the original Jane Mandrix character who made his first appearance back in Giant Size Fantastic Four, number four. Not the same character. Nope, this is a completely different Mandrix. Dealt with one of his dupes, mind you. Yes, one of his dupes. We also have this thing where we have, oh, we have this alleged guy from the future reabsorbed this other Mandrix because other dupes do that. It's a bit of an odd series, this one. Yeah, it's like time jump back and forth. And by the end, apparently they kill multiple dupes of Jay Mandrix. And he's like, eh, whatever. Later on, he pops up in Matthew Rosberg's run for Kenny X-Men. <coughs> yeah. Pops up there, and then, 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 then this version dies by the end of the run. Surprisingly, they don't break this multiple man. The one who died in... In the book Death of X, this mini series right here, yeah, that one is brought back in. Well, it was brought back just recently. Well, in Hickman's era for X, and thanks to the whole thing with, with Krakatoa and the fact that because he's immune, so they brought him back. He hasn't really done all that much since he was brought back. Surprisingly, this mini series is okay. That's the best gist of it. I only got it because of Matthew Rosenberg book. That's really, really the reason why. I think this book roughly an 8 out of 10. Yeah, it just seems as though for this book, this seems like one of his more weaker books he's done. Not a terrible book per se, but it feels like a very weak book by Matthew Rosenberg. Yeah, it feels pretty weak. Now, excuse me. Since we this book, is there anything really left by Matthew Rosenberg from Marvel Comics? Well... Yes, there's a couple miniseries left. There is Star Wars. Fall, uh, I think it was Fallen Order, Dark Temple. There's that miniseries. And a miniseries is clicked in trade. That's actually come out really soon. That's King in Black Thunderbolts. Aside from these two, I don't think there's anything else by him that I can think of. Hmm. Yeah, I'm honestly not thinking there's anything else because I pretty much have covered, like, I would probably say just about every, well, there's also one other book. There is Annihilation Scourge. Of course, that was a series of one-shots, yes. But otherwise, though, not much. I would say I've covered almost everything related to his run from Marvel. Which you're like, really? Yes, really. Yeah, just like another rare, I've covered like almost everything he's done for Marvel. I mean, I'm looking at basically all his work. I mean, these are the ones that are left. King and Black Thunderbolts. Marvel Knights 20th Anniversary. Let's see. Jedi Fallen Order, Dark Temple. Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood. 
yeah, he worked up some stories for that one. And Scourge Annihilation, I know he worked on this. Yeah. Yeah, he worked on one of the one-shots, this one. Yeah, but... <laughs> so basically about a few miniseries left. Not a lot, per se. Just the small bits here and there. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's just very few books for Matthew Rosberg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm looking at basically his work for Marvel. I would say I've covered almost everything related to the guy. Yes. Yeah, I'd say just everything. So basically, like I said, Marvel Knights 20th Anniversary, Annihilation Scourge, Star Wars Fallen, Jedi Fallen Order, Dark Temple. And King of Black Thunderbolts, and of course, well, Wolverine, Red, White, and Black. That's it. Just a few mini series. But yeah, it's great that I've covered almost everything for his time at Marvel because the last thing he came up with was actually just recently King of Black Thunderbolts because apparently he's jumped over to DC now. Yes. Yes, he has. Not really sure why he jumped over to DC, where apparently he's working on, I think it's like Batman Urban Legends. I think he's working on one of our book. <laughs> yeah, I think he just worked on Batman or Legends. He did work on also, if you just say Dark Detective, he worked on that. But aside from Urban Legends, I don't think he's worked on anything else for DC. But in the case of what comics working on right now, that's the only thing he's working on is Urban Legends. He does, I think he does the... Uh, Red Hood backup feature. So basically there's a few mini-series and one-shot stuff for him, but yeah, it's interesting though. I've covered like almost everything related to Matthew Rosberg from Marvel Comics. So basically join those list of writers where I covered almost everything they love Marvel. I mean, there's him, there's Kelly Thompson, and Donnie Coates. These three writers, really good writers, and I've covered almost everything for these writers. Uh, in the case of Donnie Coates, I don't remember exactly what I have left for him, but I think I got, I've covered like for him, just like in the case of Matthew Rosberg, almost everything. Kelly Thompson, probably almost everything. Yep. But that's going to be it for this particular video. Stay tuned for our video for the final episode of Seven Deadly Sins. And then I'm back to talk about Two of Darkness. Okay, sick video. Bye.